And there he is, <laughs> reporting reporting live from, is that the 305? Miami, Dade, Miami Dade County, 305. Report, reporting live from the oh, 305, man. man. 30 years plus years in the business, uh, covering a multitude of sports, <laughs> college football, a number of NBA shows for ESPN, uh, the play-by-play man for the Sacramento Kings. They lit the beam and had a great season in their own right. A man of many bars, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We got the greats, Mark Jones in the building. Mark, CP, the franchise, Alex Rotaros, the NBA report. Thanks for joining us, man. Man, I'm, I'm honored to be on uh, the podcast, and uh, you guys do fantastic work, man. I've been checking you guys out for a minute now. And, uh, yeah, anytime we can chop it up about basketball, it's a good day. You know, appreciate you having me on. As you mentioned, you, you've been a longtime Heat season ticket holder back in the old Miami arena. Now, back in those days, back in my day. Yeah. A guy named Patrick Ewing and his band of merry men used to come in there and give the heat that work. What were some what? of your earliest memories of those those battles man. in the 90s, man? I, I think about walking your trap, take over your trap, man. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Hey, some of the good brawls actually happened up in the stands. I was, hey, I was at the game right in front of P.J. Brown when he suplexed Charlie. <laughs> Wow. My neighbor up in Stanford, Connecticut, when I lived wow. in Connecticut in the studio show. These yeah. are two of the nicest guys that you'll ever find in the NBA. And one yeah. guy is suplexing the other. That's how that's how vitriolic that's that that playoff series was. And I have fantastic memories from that. I mean, I remember going into the heat locker room after that melee, and Tim Hardaway was sitting in his cubicle and he calls me up and calls me over and he says, Mark, you know how Tim talks. It's going to be very interesting to see who's going to play next game. It's going to be very interesting. <laughs> I, I just think that was great basketball. The, the, every, every possession mattered. Yeah. Every possession was like life or death. Um, when Allen Houston shot, rolled around, and fell, it, it was like a Disney movie with everything happening in slow motion where you get a snapshot of everyone's face in the crowd. And uh, th- those were really life or death series. And Hey, this year's Knicks heat series was pretty exciting too. Yeah, it, it was man. And it really brought us back. And, you know, I, I thought that the Knicks just didn't have enough offense there, but Brunson's brilliance. And how about your fellow countryman, RJ Barrett? I thought RJ had yeah. some, some good games in that series. What, what did you think about those two guys with the, with the Knicks this year? I, I love Brunson. I mean, we saw glimpses of it last year in the playoffs, his ability to run a team on his own when Luca was out with Dallas. And, you know, I think he made the right move coming to New York. I think it's a great fit. I think he showed the requisite leadership to take this team to the next level. Um, I love the fact that in the two man game, you know, uh, Julius Randall told me that he did a lot of work last summer uh, trying to play out of the pocket because he knew it was going to be a lot of pick and roll basketball with with him and Jalen and I think there's a couple more steps to be taken by both him and RJ you know I think efficiency is a little bit of an issue for for Barrett but you know he's shown a willingness over the last couple years to get into the gym with his trainer Drew Hanlon and work on his shooting he's still you know just five years into the NBA there's a lot of growth there for him and you know I think there's a lot of improvement I I like what the Knicks did this year Um, you know the 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 five spot with Mitchell Robinson and um, you know your your young cat out of Texas uh, his name slips me right now um, uh, was hurt at the end of the year your back Sims Sims Jericho Sims. yeah Jericho I love Jericho Sims yeah love Jericho Sims I think I think the Knicks could take another step next year you know I I think it comes down to um, them being able to. Uh, maybe play with a little bit more pace because, you know, they were in the bottom quarter of teams with pace. And I think when you play with less pace, it becomes harder sometimes to score in the half court. 
Oh, Absolutely, man. man. And, and we're talking to a uh, longtime ESPN broadcaster, Mark Jones. And and Mark, uh, we know we're, we're pressed for time, but really oh, just, uh, just a couple questions on, on a great and, and great career, man. And one is, you know, you, you've covered so many sports at the collegiate level, at the pro level. Um, you know, wh- what does that mean for you to 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 be so versatile and, and this stage in the game? How did you how do you stay sharp? Like, how do you stay on top of things? Man, I, I um you know what? I, th- I think being able to guys remain your authentic self is really important um, to be able to be passionate about what you do and immerse yourself. I consider myself an NBA guy. So, you know, um, down here in Miami, every other day, I'm at either Stan Remy's gym, watching guys work out, um, or Ronnie Taylor's has a gym not far from my home here in Miami. They play five on five every Thursday, every Wednesday and see a bunch of your Knicks down here working out, see a bunch of the heat guys working out, guys come in from out of town and just be able to sit down with guys after they've finished their workouts and chop it up and stay close to the game. Because I I think what has kept me really excited about this after 33 years at ESPN is it's still a lot of fun. You know, I, I like to get on the. Mike and look forward to working with Doris Burke or Hubie Brown or Mark Jackson, Jeff Van Gundy, whoever it is, and uh, have some fun, be able to, you know, talk about strategies. And, you know, if you're in the gym with these players, you know what the play calls are, you know what the strategies and tactics are and to be able to um, stay true to the culture too, man. Like I, I like having fun during basketball games. I like to think that, you know, broadcasting is really broadcasting that you speak to, everyone in the audience. And uh, I like to have fun with uh, some of my Afro- African-Americanisms, you know, uh, that's become a little bit of a, a signature with me over the years. Hey, listen, it hasn't been easy, man, because back when I first came into the business, back in 1991, when I first said, uh, doing a college football game, take it to the house, there were people in uh, at ABC that wanted to run me out of TV because mm. They're like, hey, what's he talking about? Nobody knows what he's talking about. Nobody understands him. Now, when you look at college football, when there's a touchdown in college football, the graphic across the bottom of the screen says to the house. So there, there have been some cultural uh, issues I've had to fight through, but I was never going to give up on being myself. You know, when I talk about De'Aaron Fox being on some black Air Force energy, there's a group of people that know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, if you're from New York, you definitely know what that energy is all about. <laughs> exactly. Right. And, and that, that I like to consider that that's, 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 that's who I am. You know, I, I see sometimes in social media, you see criticisms and you're like, who does Mark Jones think he's talking about? Or he's 60 years old talking about, but guys, you find me on the corner, hanging on the block. I tell people, don't, don't be misled by the, the Gucci <laughs> spot. <laughs> that's right. Let's go. Dolce Gabbana, I'm, you you know, I'm out there a little bit. (laughs) You had one that sent NBA Twitter, the NBA world ablaze. It was against, it was the Boston Celtics against the Philadelphia 76ers. And you said the two J's smoking that Philadelphia pack tonight. And I heard that on airwaves. I was like, did he just, did Mark Jones just do a say double that? Take. I was like, wait, did I just say <laughs> Did Mark Jones just really say that on the airways? I was rolling. <laughs> you know what? People, uh, I appreciate that. People ask me, do you write these down? Do you have them planned? I really don't. But hmm. at the moment I heard two J's come off my lips, you know what's coming next, right? <laughs> two J's? You know, we oh, made oh, it, man. man, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been, been journalistic malpractice yeah. if I say something. Yeah. A, a little double on Todger, man. A little double yeah. on Todger, man. And, and Mark, you know, in 30 plus years in the game, um, I, I, you know, you covered many sports, but is there a mentor or two that really helped springboard your career that that you that you really look back on and say, you know, this this was the person that really helped me? You know what? I, I um I remember. I worked at TSN in Toronto for four years before I got my gig at ESPN for the next 33 with God's mercy and blessings. Um, I remember going down to, and I used to cover the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, their magazine show when I was working in Toronto. 
And one day I went down to the American League Championship Series and Bryant Gumbel was there covering it for NBC. And I introduced myself to him. I said, Mr. Gumbel, my goal is to call big games like you one day, maybe host the Olympics, call NBA games, do the NBA finals like you do. And he said, young man, I watched your sportscast last night on TSN. I think you're ready. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, he blew me away. And he was a real inspiration for me at the time and call it, kind of followed his blueprint in terms of trying to be uh, journalistic, being very impeccable and precise with your words uh, and having a little bit of fun to, to just be me. Um, and he, he has been kind of a roadmap through the mm -hmm. years. Uh, I worked with Brent Musburger earlier in my career at ESPN and ABC, who was phenomenal in terms of um, watching him doing scene sets and game opens and things like that as well. And Brent was always very helpful. And Dick Vermeil was somebody mm. who, when it comes to college football, after my, I'll never forget this, this guy, it's a great story. After my first year of doing college football at ABC and ESPN, Dick Vermeil calls me up in June and says, hey, Mark, I know they plan on making you go from sidelines to play by play. Why don't you come down to my home here in Philadelphia? And we'll go over my old Eagles playbook. I'll teach you some terminology and you'll be 100 percent ahead of most play by play guys. So I went down to his home for four or five days and uh, his wife, Carol, and him had me in their home and we would study film during the day. And that college football season was very successful for me and allowed me to be where I am now on the college football roadmap. Wow. Some leg yeah. legendary names, man. Legendary yeah. names. I've, I've, been, I've been blessed, man. 33 years this June with ESPN. And somebody told me the other day that only Dick Vitale has wow. been on the longer than me at ESPN. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I've worked with some real talented people that have, that have helped me along the way. Incredible, man. And yeah. uh, and on, on the league, is there is there a favorite player that uh, that you enjoy calling these games for as you, as you go through your travels each season? Man, you know what? I, I love every every all 30 teams in the NBA. They have a favorite player for me. Um, if it's if it's the Knicks, it's going to be Brunson or Randall. If it's the Sacramento Kings, it's you know, I love watching De'Aaron Fox. His speed can be spellbinding at times. Mm. Uh, it's a bonus. Malik Monk is another guy that's so exciting to watch in Sacramento and um you know, we mentioned Jamal Murray a little bit earlier. Uh, that entire OKC team, OKC team with um, Shea okay. Gilgis and what he's done. Another Canadian, man. Yeah, yeah. There's some some great young talent on the come up right now, and that's why you know you, you never know from year to year what it's going to look like, and that's part of the fun and the adventure of being courtside. I got the best. I got the best seat in the house, man. True courtside. Story. I love getting to the arena early and speaking to guys. And, uh, you know, being able to tell their stories is what really matters to me, you know, getting to know guys. And um, I think sometimes in sports, we objectify players and reduce them to stats, points, rebounds and assists, as opposed to um, talking about the work that goes into it or their journey and taking a snapshot of where they are now in that journey. I think being able to humanize guys during the course of a game uh is very important i i agree man and, and you do a great job and uh continued success to you we we definitely appreciate the time that you gave us hopefully on the next one we'll bring chuck in we, we chuck's traveling all over the place so we'll, we'll get right. chuck in we'll try to line up you know that that remix with dame dallas we'll try to make something happen <laughs> <man>. <laughs> hey if they mix it to miami we'll, we'll make that happen that'd be fun uh, yeah, absolutely. Chuck's, Chuck's an idol of mine, man. You know that, right? I'm, that's my era. I'm 60 years old, man. That's, you know, uh, don't believe the hype. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah, he, he's been Fight a huge power. Baby. Fight the Power to me is still the best rap song ever. Mm. You know, with all due apologies to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> true, true indeed, man. You know, Chuck has been uh, the, the biggest champion of, of our wave, both on Knicks Fan TV and on the NBA Report. Uh, he supports us. He's he's in our live chat before we even start the show after every Nick game. So, um, you know, he's just been a, a great mentor of mine as well, man. So we uh, certainly share those sentiments. I tell you, last time I came to New York City to do a Knicks game, mm. I was walking around 34th and 7th 
looking for the old PE t-shirt with the scope on it. You yeah, know, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't find any, man, but I'm still looking. I don't know if there's a merch site or anything like that. But Wow. Well, yeah, we'll hit him up. Hey, maybe he might make one for you himself, man. He's a great artist as well, man. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, next year when you when we play, when you guys play, have the Sacramento Kings, we got to come on and do a special edition. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's yeah. preview the game. And, and awesome. Mark, like Appreciate I said, man, thanks again for the time. Enjoy the weekend and uh, enjoy the off season, man. There is no off season, but I will anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mark gets it. There's only an on season CV. Only yeah, an on right. season. Well, it could, could be summer league too, right? Are you going to be hey, covering, you covering summer league, right? I'll be I'll be calling all the games out at summer league, man. I'll be talking about the New York Knicks and gassing you guys up. Absolutely, man. So yeah, hey, I'll reach out when I'm there. And uh, th- thanks again, man. You got it. Thanks for having me, guys. Keep up the fantastic work. Love you. Thank you. Appreciate. It. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> All right. That was the great Mark Jones, ladies and gentlemen of ESPN, man. We definitely appreciate him uh, for his time. We had a great show today. We had Keith Smith, our, our NBA offseason preview. Uh, lots, lots of news and rumors going around, man. And uh, and we had the great Mark Jones out. So big show for the NBA report, man. I'm, I'm, I'm telling these people right now, you better tell a friend to tell a friend, because by the time this season starts, it's going to be the number one show for the fans by the fans. We're putting it out there. We're putting that energy out there. Absolutely. That's the only thing you can do is put that energy out there. Yeah. Yeah. TM in the chat, shout out to our King Mod, uh, says, we don't have an offseason anymore, either CP and Alex, and that's a yeah. fact. We don't. There stop. is no offseason. There, there is no offseason, man. No breaks, no offseason. season. <laughs>